you're on Rescue TV with a friend and someone who I've admired for many, many years, Tori Archibald, welcome to Rescue TV. Oh, thank you, Faha. Uh -huh. You're celebrating 15 years as being the PR maven of Australia. How do you feel? You're not even like old enough to be the PR maven of Australia. Well, I feel like I've been through a lot in the last 15 years, but it's been an amazing journey. So you started off, uh, you had worked for other people, and then one day you launched yourself mm. as your own company. Um, how many staff did you have when you started? Just me, just me. And actually my first office was um, in the back room of my dad's office. Of in course. <laughs> Square. Um, always a good story. And now, um, yeah, I'm lucky enough, I have an amazing team of 15 and we've gone from a PR and events company into a full service agency. So when you first started, I think it's fair to say that as a woman in her early, in her mid twenties, mm. you were really uh, betting a lot on your own skill and your ability to, mm. you know, catch the ball by the horn and go with it. There were a lot of big PR names in Australia at the time. What made you think that you should and you could launch your business at that time? I just knew within myself that um, I had something to give and I really just wanted to follow my passion and work with incredible people and amazing brands and I think I've been really lucky along the way and that has really come to fruition. So now, you know, when I look at the portfolio of brands that we've worked with, they're, you know, global leaders and... You don't do baby brands, do you? Um, I have done baby brands and I do along the way because I do like to help others um, and hopefully, you know, they actually become those mega brands. But, you know, traditionally, um, we have yeah, worked with all the big movers and shakers. And a lot of the time it is bringing these bigger brands into this market and really establishing them and setting them up for success. So we're talking about brands like Zara, Topshop, Sea Folly, Ultraceuticals, uh, Neiman Marcus. I mean, these are David Jones you've worked with, Maya you've worked with. These are some of the big iconic brands. Mm. Tell me, as a woman in her mid-twenties, and the reason I ask you this is that there's someone watching, you know, today who's thinking, I want to, I dream about it, but I'll just wait till I have enough experience. Mm. What did you do first? Did you go after the big clients or did you timidly approach the clients that you thought would be easy to start with? Well, I think, you know, when I quit my job and I decided to start my agency, my first client was David Jones. A little client. A little client. <laughs> <laughs> and um, to be honest, I think it just really fell in my lap. So it did have a little bit to do with luck, but it also had a lot to do with, you know, sheer hard work and determination and a belief that I could do it. So I was really lucky that, you know, I launched Megan Gall as the face of David Jones. And, you know, that was back in 2001. Amazing. And I think now, you know, looking back at the history in retail in Australia, she's been the most successful brand ambassador for an Australian retailer and that was really a case study and from there I was approached by Maya to do the same with Again. Jennifer Hawkins and I was actually the first um, external consultant really and you were to, in your 20s yeah I was in my 20s wow. um, to actually go to a large retailer and say hey we can do better and um, Maya really believed in that and we did our first international event with them which was in New York with Jennifer Hawkins um, at the Gramercy Park Hotel which in those days you know was the cool place to go and you know I took Jen to be interviewed by Donald Trump and that was a start I guess of my international journey and passion with and global brands. And you still travel so much so I do. you know next <laughs> week you're off on a global tour and that's it's a big deal and I'm going to point out that you're a single mum uh, you have a massive business and uh, 15 chickadees in the office. Yes. Um, you, you know, are self-financed uh, in your success. How have you kept that momentum going? I think, you know, to start and to have that plucky kind of sense of confidence is one thing. But, you know, in that time, there's been the GFC. In that time, there's been the store wars. In that time, there's been a huge influx of mm. other PR agencies setting up shop and calling themselves full service agencies. Yeah. What do you do to keep ahead of the game? I know traveling is one mm. thing, but what do you do? Well, I think it's about organization and it's also about your support team. 
And I think, you know, being a single mum as well, you need to be super organised because you don't have anyone to lean on. So it's about getting the right people around you so that you can be a game changer in your profession. So, you know, I've always really relied on an amazing EA. Um, we plan my schedule three months in advance, that sometimes six months. That was a, a really months. interesting <laughs> thing for me to learn. I think that that's really phenomenal. Is that personally yeah. and professionally? Yes. Yes. Amazing. So at one point I did actually have two, but now I realise it's better just with one really amazing one, <laughs> which, um, you know, we, we sit down and we, we literally schedule both my itinerary of what I'm doing and my daughter's as well. And I think now my daughter's coming up to her 10th birthday and we have school holidays. You need to be super organised because you know, I like to take her to school in the morning. I like to be there for her. But in the same instance, I am, you know, the sole provider um, and the income and the homemaker. So there are all these different aspects to my life that, you know, need to be time managed. So I think I learned early on in my business that if you were going to succeed, that you needed to be really... Um, buttoned up. Yeah, buttoned up. And really, um, you know, when you get to work, it's about priorities. And it's about if something doesn't hold a value, don't worry about it. And delegating, I think, is a really big part of my success as well. If you can delegate to the right people who can deliver on your behalf, you know, you're steps ahead of what everyone else is doing because you're already on to the next thing. So I think, you know, the team and the support system and, of course, a good nanny helps. Yeah. I'm going to ask you something because I think a lot of people don't want to talk about this, but one of the things that I've always admired about you is you look amazing and you look unflappable. And I kind of think that when a beautiful woman enters a room and does a presentation, that's part of her power. And we mm. never talk about that. Have you, you know, purposefully thought about your grooming, your personal image, your mm. image as a woman? Yeah, of course. I mean, a lot of the time, you know, I'm in international boardrooms presenting to some of the most powerful marketing people in the world. And of course you have to look the part, but I think a lot of that also comes from confidence and, you know, um, self-love within, being happy with who you are and being in a really good place. But of course- And have you had moments where you faked it because you've been in a really dark place, but you've, you know, put the lipstick on, got the- You gotta keep going. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you absolutely need to keep going. So what going. do you do to regenerate? Because there is not a single mm. person in the world who's had their own business who's mm. been able to just call it smooth sailing. Yeah. There are some really dark moments. Oh, look, of there? course, there's tough times along the way, but I think those tough times make you better as a person. And, you know, my father always taught me early on, there's like two things. He said, always have coffee, not lunch. <laughs> and you're going to make mistakes along the way, but the mistakes that you make will make you a better person. And, you know, of course I've made mistakes, but I've learned from them and I've learned how to be a better person in business. But, it, you know, again, it just comes down to being really super organized. And going back to your point about beauty, like, you know, I work with amazing brands, so I'm lucky that, you know, it's not only my job to look the part, but also believe in what I'm doing. So, you know, it might be a beauty brand that we're representing, and of course I'm using all of their products. And that's a testament when I walk into a room and sure. someone says, you have amazing skin. I can say, oh, that's ultraceuticals, or, you know, you've got amazing hair, and, you know, that's so-and-so that we're looking after. So I think it comes down to working with amazing brands, amazing people, and just living and breathing what you're doing. So uh, I don't mind saying this, we're about the same age and we've yes. both had to um, embrace the digital revolution mm. and re-educate ourselves. At what point did you say, I don't want to be just a participant, I want to be a leader in this movement and in this amazing change that's coming across media because mm. it's not about you know magazines and print only yeah. anymore. I think I'm really lucky because I travel, um, you know, it hit me about five years ago when I was in New York working with um, Shopbop and I could yep. really see the change and you know it's like a digital, it's not a bricks and mortar business, it's completely online and that really shifted my perception um, you know and going over there and working with brands like Sea Folly and taking that brand to the States you know, you're doing these desk visits with people, but really they just want to know about digital. So my mindset really switched. That's what we think. Yeah. They just want to know about digital. <laughs> they do want to know about digital. And my mindset changed. And, you know, while a showroom's always been really important to me, it was, you know, people didn't want me because I was a publicist and I, you know, did amazing events. They wanted me for full service. And digital for that is just such a huge component of it. And I really think, you know, I do have an amazing, you know, world-class showroom now. 
but you know, in my plans for the next 12 months, that's probably gonna shrink more because more and more we're gonna be providing content and more digital expertise to our clients. I'm gonna ask you a question to wrap up. What advice would you give to the 25 year old Tori before she started Torsta? Oh, Baha. Believe in yourself because dreams do come true. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> 15 years is an unbelievable milestone for any relationship, but certainly to have your own business. That's oh, the, thank you. a major, major commitment. And um, you're doing an amazing job. I can't wait to celebrate the next 15 with oh, you. Oh, thank you, Baha. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.